Hey everyone, welcome to Hunters Connect. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about canning wild game meat. I think that canning wild game meat is something that everybody should give a try. I've been doing it for the past few years now and it is one of my go-tos. So I, I will be canning some bear meat that I, from a bear that I shot this spring and it's been one of my favorite ways to do bear. So for bear meat, you wanna cook it pretty well done so you don't get trichinosis and canning your meat cooks it to oblivion, but also it turns it to like the most tender pot roast meat you've ever had. And you could really make anything with it, put it on anything, serve it up as a side dish, put it in your meal. The options are endless. And that's one of the reasons why I love to do it. And I've also done it with deer and elk. So it's not just something I do with bear. It's something that I, I do with other species as well. So the process of canning meat is actually quite simple and there's really only a few things you, you're gonna need. So I'll quickly show you guys what those are. So they make a few different sizes of cans and I've used three different sizes in the past. Um, I like the really small ones for like a snack size serving. Then these pint style jars is good for like a meal's worth between one or two people. And then you could do the larger jars for like a more of a family style portion of meat. So one thing to note is these lids on your canning jars is that they're when you use them for in the canner, they're kind of a one time use thing. So after you can it pop the seal open, you're going to want to discard that just because if they, they won't work as good the second time around and you need your can to be perfectly sealed to keep your, your meat shelf stable. If, it, if there's an air pocket in there sir, or it doesn't get a good seal, your meat will go bad. <laughs> so what I'll suggest is if you're doing a second batch or you're using cans over again, you're good to use the cans again, but go ahead and purchase new lids. So they sell the lids, se lids separately, so you can just reuse the cans, use new lids. Once you have your cans, the next main item you're gonna need, obviously, is your pressure canner. The pressure canner is what does the whole process of sealing up the jar, cooking the meat, and keeping it airtight. So I'll show you guys how to use this here in a second, but this is gonna be required to do your meat canning. And I believe they make um, another, there's a few different other styles. And I know like people who can um, jams and jellies, I think they do a process like what you would call a water bath or something like that. And that actually won't work for meat, from my understanding. You need an actual pressure canner to can meat. So once you have your canner and your jars, then all you need is meat. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using bear meat. So I had a hind quarter from a bear that I shot this spring. And once I got it deboned and got all the meat off the bone from there, I just cubed up the whole thing. So all the different roasts that came off the hind quarter, I just chunked it up into about, anyway, like about one inch cubes and tossed all that into a bowl. So now that I got my meat, my canner, my jars. Let's hop into the next step. So before we go ahead and start throwing things into the canner, what you're gonna wanna do is fill up the um, pressure canner with a few inches of water. I usually go just a couple inches up and you can almost see in my canner like the line that's made from just the previous cannings I've done. It's just kinda stained a line in the bottom of my can from where the water's consistently been so that's where I usually fill up my water too. Once I get it filled up, I'll go ahead and stick it on the stove, turn on my burner, and then what I'm gonna do is get this water simmering. And then in the meantime, I'll hop over here and start throwing meat in the cans. So one of the things that I'm gonna do right off the bat is when I take the lids off these cans, I'm gonna throw the rubber sealed part into a bowl of hot water. That way that seal gets a little softer and we'll have a better seal when I screw the lid back on. So I got those lids sitting in warm water. I'll go ahead and start loading up my cans. Fill up the can until you have about a, maybe an inch, you're about an inch from the top is kind of 
where I usually will go. So there we have it. We have our jar filled with the meat. So at this point, once you get the meat in, it's really up to you what you want to do. Um, I've always put seasonings in it. Um, you don't have to do that. You can leave it completely unseasoned and then seasoned to taste once it's already canned and you're prepping it for your meal. Or you could put some in there and kind of let it cook all together. So far, I've always put some seasonings in before. I'm just going to do a little bit of salt and a little bit of... Um, dry rub in the jar and really um, there's no strict rule on the amount just I've had some be way too salty so be easy on the salt I guess um, and I've also done like onions and peppers and different um, veggies like that chopped up and then kind of mixed it in and stuck it in the jar as well so you can really kind of get creative with it and try out different recipes and see what you like from there once you put the seasonings and meat in Sometimes like the, some blood or some juice from the meat will get on the seal of your jar. And then like this one, this one even has got some seasoning on there. You're going to want to make sure you wipe that off. Because remember, the most important part is getting this seal like perfect. You need the seal to be perfect. That way your canned meat will be shelf stable, airtight. So make sure it's really clean. We're going to grab one of those lids, put it on, grab the outer ring, screw it on. It doesn't have to be, you don't need to really wrench on it and just get it nicely tightened. Once this pressure canner is at a simmer, that's when I'll go ahead and start putting my jars in and moving on to the next step. So from this point, I'm going to go ahead and put your jars in. I've only got, let's see, two, four, six, seven jars total here. So I can probably fit all of them down here on the bottom layer. But if you're doing more jars, you can go ahead and stack them depending on how big your pressure canner is. So I got them in there, I'm just gonna evenly space them out since I have the room to do so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. So once you put that lid on, what's gonna happen is, as you can see, this it already has enough pressure in here for this little top piece to pop up. So before there's any pressure in it, or when the whole process is over, this will drop down because it'll be depressurized. But right now, there is enough pressure in there, so this is now engaged. And what we're waiting for is the dial to start raising up. And we're gonna shoot for, with these size jars, I typically will go somewhere around 13 to 14 pounds of pressure for about 75 minutes. And the times really depend on how much meat or how big of jars you're doing. Smaller jars will take a little less time. The larger jars will take more time. But you're gonna wanna be in that 13 to 14 pounds of pressure. And for these size jars, I'm gonna go 75 minutes. Sometimes I go 90 minutes if I have a lot of jars in there. So, I mean, I don't think it hurts to go extra. So that 90 minute mark, you'd be good to go and take them off. So in order to keep our pressure system consistent, we first need to get it to our desired poundage here. So I've got my stovetop on just full tilt. It's on the highest it'll go. And I will do that just to get it up to the 14 pounds of pressure. And then once I start getting close to that 14 pounds of pressure, I'll lay off the heat, usually go down to half heat really. Once the dial has hit your desired poundage, that's when you'll start your 75 to 90 minute timer. And in the process, you're gonna probably need to throttle back or give a little more throttle on your stove top with the heat. You're gonna have to play around with it. Sometimes I can get it just perfect and I don't have to touch it the whole time. Other times I'm kinda like tinkering with it every 10 to 15 minutes to, to, to keep it right in that zone I'm looking for. So it really just depends how your stove top works and it varies, but as long as you're sitting right in that 
that desired poundage of temperature, you'll be good. So once the dial has been consistently sitting at your desired poundage for the 70 to 90 minute time frame, depending on how many jars and how big of jars you're running, then you can go ahead and dial off the heat or remove the pressure cooker completely from the stovetop off onto a cooler area. And you're gonna let that pressure release. Once all the pressure has released, you'll be good to go and open up your canner and start removing your cans. Be careful though, these cans will be extremely hot. You're gonna need a glove or some type of tongs to get in there and pull them out of the canner because they're gonna be way too hot to touch. And you'll even notice that the insides of these jars are, are gonna be like at a consistent boil inside the cans for a little while after you pull them out. So as you can see here, these are the cans that we finished up last night. We have seven of those. And this, I figured I'd pull this can out just to show you guys. This is one of those bigger jars um, that I've done in the past. So now that the meat is canned, it's all done. Like that's, that's it. It's a pretty simple process. Now this meat is ready to eat. You can open this jar and eat it right out of the can. And one thing to note is these rings, they're basically not needed. Like if you needed to, you could pull these off use them on another batch if you had to, because the seal here, that is airtight. And it actually, it takes a little bit of work to pry it off and pop it open. But once it pops open, that is when it's no longer shelf stable. So you gotta eat it within a reasonable time frame, just like you would any other meat. But you don't need to put it in your refrigerator before the seal is popped. You can keep it on the shelves, keep it in a cool, area in your shelves or in your pantry and it is going to last for years. So I hope this video helped you guys out and maybe prompts you to try canning some meat this hunting season because it's really good and it's pretty cool how you can just keep it in the shelves and it doesn't need refrigeration. So that's that's one of the biggest reasons I love it. It's just so handy and convenient. I appreciate you guys watching this video and we'll catch you guys on the next one.